Do you have any idea what the best-selling smartphone in early 2019 was? Maybe the Samsung Galaxy S10, or maybe the OnePlus 7 Pro? Actually, no, and they were far from it. The number one spot was taken by the $150 Samsung Galaxy A10. Number two was another one of their mid-range phones, the A50. And in fact, in this entire list of top-selling Android phones, not a single one was a flagship. This might be a bit of a surprise. The flagships are the phones you always hear about first. They're the ones you see all the flashy reviews about. But this mid-range category has exploded in recent years, and what's even more interesting is where it's going. Oh yeah, and a huge thanks to Surfshark VPN for being the sponsor of this video. So, just for some context, when smartphones began, there were just flagships. Each company had a $400 to $500 offering with all the bells and whistles, and the game was all about trying to make the best iPhone killer. Over the years though, these flagships got more expensive, and in no uncertain terms. That $500 very quickly became $700, and soon enough $1000 and beyond. As Android became more capable, though, and the chipsets more powerful, the budget smartphone became possible. Companies were able to sell something for $100 to $200, which could just about get stuff done. There were noticeable compromises, but just the concept of being able to use Facebook, WhatsApp, the Android market, having only invested $100 was really cool. But then, over the coming years, we start to notice something. Flagship phones were getting more expensive, yes, but budget phones were different. They appealed to the kind of consumer who is more sensitive to price changes, and so companies couldn't raise prices without losing sales. This created a massive gap. Enter the mid-range smartphone. You might have been surprised when I told you earlier that the best-selling phones now are consistently mid-rangers. Because here on YouTube, and on the internet in general, everyone talks about the flagships. Well, the reason for that is, frankly, flagships are interesting. Every tech head wants to learn about all the cool new camera features Samsung's going to release on their next Galaxy flagship, but you'll probably only learn about their mid-range phones if you are specifically planning on buying them. Flagships are where the majority of a company Company's research and investments go, but I've got five reasons why, even then, people are switching from these flagships to mid ranges. Number five. China. Let's say Samsung was the only smartphone company out there. They could build their mid-range phones such that they are consistently noticeably slower than their flagships. They could make each application open 20% slower. They could make each photo taken consistently lower resolution, and by doing this, encourage people to spend $1,000 on their top tier model. But in the last five years, Chinese phones have gotten good. Brands like OnePlus, Realme, Xiaomi, they're making smartphones with practically flagship grade hardware at mid-range prices, and as they become more available, available around the world, Samsung's only choice if they don't want to miss out on this lucrative mid-range market is to make really good mid-range phones, but that leads on to the next problem for flagships. There are two primary types of competition in markets. The flagship market is governed by feature-based competition. Firms differentiate themselves by making new features, what are essentially optional extras, things like super high-resolution cameras or curved displays, things that tech nerds like me love to play around with, but we pay a big price premium to do so. The mid-range market, though, in part, because of this pressure from China, runs on price competition. The primary objective of these smartphones has become to pack all the main features people need into the lowest possible price. And this is bad for companies, but great for consumers. I mentioned earlier that flagships are where a lot of companies' resources and investments go to create new features, but the mid-range is where a lot of those features end up a year later. Anyways, for $400 now, a company is expected to use an upper mid-range processor, a double and usually triple camera setup, offering an experience that is not just close but often indistinguishable from flagship. And that brings me on to number three. Just before which, if you're enjoying this video, a sub would be amazing. Anyways, with technology, in most cases, we face diminishing returns. An extra 30% power does not make your phone 30% more useful. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of niches that would love to have a phone that's 10 times as powerful. Mobile gamers, for example, or amateur photographers who are considering ditching their DSLR camera. But for the vast majority of people, the smartphone only exists as a portal for applications. The ability to watch a Netflix show, listen to music, or just flick through Instagram. These users will gain almost nothing from a 20-core CPU or a 200-megapixel hexa camera setup. When smartphones were in their early stages, each improvement, for example an increase in display resolution or storage speed, would have made these simple tasks noticeably better. But to an average consumer, the improvement is becoming less and less noticeable each year. It is worth making a differentiation that in the professional space, more speed is always better. That's why products like the $50,000 Mac 
Mac Pro exist. But the smartphone is not that. Professionals use professional equipment, and by its very mainstream nature, smartphones running on smartphone operating systems are built around the mass market. They're not gonna replace these Pro tools. Number two, flagships can be worse. And by this, I'm not saying that a $1,000 phone is gonna be worse than a four to $500 phone from the same company. But there are some characteristics that flagships tend to have that aren't for everybody. They've almost consistently ditched the headphone jack, for example, and their displays are often larger and curved, which I can manage, but I know for some people will make the device harder to use. In the pursuit of more glamorous form factors to create a better first impression, flagships can end up creating more inconveniences. Having a display that fills the entire front of your phone looks great, but has so far come at the cost of extra thickness and a motorized camera that adds fragility, and you have to wait for each time you want to face unlock. And now, arguably one of the most important things that has enabled this mid-range rise to prominence is actually a psychological trick. Hear me out, this gets pretty deep. From the very beginning of humanity, the very reason we've managed to survive as a species is because we are risk averse. This means we like siding with the safer option. It's the reason most people would prefer to keep their money in a safe bank account as opposed to invest it in risky shares, even if on average, they'd be earning more money doing the latter. And this risk aversion translates to our day-to-day decision-making. We shy away from extreme options because we feel like if we go down the middle, we can never go too far wrong and we like to be in the majority. Humans get satisfaction when we do something that is reciprocated by everyone else. So we have a tendency to pick the option that we also think other people will pick. And so I mentioned it was gonna get pretty deep, but the way this translates to phones is we tell ourselves we don't want the cheapest option because the quality won't be good enough and that we don't need the most expensive, that's a luxury. We feel at ease when presented with the middle ground Around, especially in this smartphone market because of how little the compromise is with mid-range phones. But there's more. You might have heard that our minds are inherently lazy. It's true. I think a better way of putting it though is that our minds are efficient. They don't like to waste time and energy thinking about things when it can be avoided. And so oftentimes when faced with complex problems, which for a lot of people picking a smartphone can be, we pick the one that will minimize the time taken to decide. Middle makes this very easy for us. Now, I do just want to add one caveat into this whole video. Technological progress is not a slope, it's a staircase. We have periods of relative stagnation where we see continuous little improvements followed by a big shift, another period of small improvements, and then another big thing. And the way I see it working is this. Every time there's a new breakthrough, flagship phones will pull ahead because they have early access to these features. But then as this technology becomes more mature, the mid-range will catch up because global competition will force it to. We've seen this happen when the cell phone turned into the smartphone, and we might be about to see it again with the foldable phone. There is also the other slightly more gloomy prediction of the future, which suggests that the smartphone market is going to plateau. In this scenario, there is no big change. And as the years go on, phones just start looking like identical slabs of glass. And shopping for a smartphone becomes a bit like shopping for a home appliance, less about upgrading to new and exciting features, more about getting a task done. But personally, I trust that companies will continue to excite us, that flagships will continue leaping ahead and new breakthroughs will happen. We might be near the end of the glass brick form factor, but this technology itself is just getting started. Surfshark VPN is pretty crazy value. You pay $1.99 a month and that gives you unlimited simultaneous connections. You probably already know that VPNs can keep your browsing secure, especially on public networks, and also that they can help you get around internet censorship in certain regions like China, but Surfshark does a lot more than that. As well as being able to connect to single locations, it allows you to multi-hop or encrypt your data through two different servers at the same time. Surfshark can also scan online databases to make sure your emails and passwords haven't been leaked and let you use something called blind search, an internet search tool with no logs, no tracking and no ads. Two of the coolest things here are a built-in ad blocker, which can let you load pages quicker and using less data and the ability to access 15 different Netflix libraries from around the world. So check the link in the description and use code BOSS to get an 83% discount. Plus, if you join during the Black Friday campaign, which is still going, there's another three months free on top of that. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.